Susan L. Smalley, Fully Present, The Science, Art, and Practice of Mindfulness. Step into the world of mindful living and conscious eating with a fully present, the science, art, and practice of mindfulness by Susan L. Smalley. This book summary will take you on a journey through embracing the power of mindfulness with a focus on how it can enhance your relationship with food, improve your emotional health, and transform mundane tasks into enriching experiences. You'll learn about mindfulness practices such as mindful breathing, walking meditation, body scan meditation, and loving-kindness practices that can change your perspective on life and help you build a more connected, present, and fulfilled life. Mindful Eating Unveiled Reconnect with nature and the origins of your food by practicing mindful eating. Start by visualizing the journey of a fruit, such as a grape, from its inception as a seed to its arrival at your home. This practice heightens your senses, intensifies the flavor experience, and inspires a true appreciation for the complexity surrounding the food we consume. Take a moment to ponder the widespread notion that city kids are unaware of milk's origin. Why do such myths persist? One possible explanation lies in society's increasing disconnection from nature and the food we eat. Enter the practice of mindful eating. Rooted in the broader concept of mindfulness, which emphasizes awareness in the present moment, mindful eating encourages a deeper appreciation for the food in front of us. To begin practicing mindful eating, find a comfortable place to sit with a grape or any fruit within reach. Envision the entire life cycle of the fruit, starting from the seed it once was. Track its metamorphosis into a small vine, the sunlight and nutrients it consumed to mature, and ultimately the fruit-bearing plant it became. Remember that this process involved human intervention, people planting, nurturing, and harvesting the grapes, packaging and shipping them, and eventually bringing them to a supermarket near you. Allow your mind to explore the intricate connections that led one single grape to this moment in your life. At this point, examine the grape as if you're discovering it for the first time. Observe its color, texture, and light reflections. Then, consciously decide whether to eat it or not. If you choose to take a bite, savor the taste, and chew slowly. As you indulge, pay attention to the thoughts, memories, and ideas swirling through your mind. By focusing on the what and why of our food, mindful eating enables us to appreciate not only its flavor but also the multitude of connections that bring it to our plates. Perhaps that grape will be one of the tastiest you've ever had, a testament to the power of mindfulness in elevating our experiences. Nurturing Habits with Incentives Shifting ingrained habits requires understanding the power of incentives and consequences. As showcased in the book Freakonomics, healthcare workers at Cedars-Sinai Hospital significantly improved hand-washing habits when given appropriate incentives and an environment supporting this behavior. Similarly, Cultivating mindfulness involves setting achievable targets, creating a supportive environment, and utilizing the feedback our minds give us. By consistently pursuing these practices, we strengthen positive habits, making them second nature. Are you struggling to overcome persistent negative behaviors like smoking or spending excessive time online? Adapting our habits isn't easy, but economist Stephen Levitt and journalist Stephen Dubner offer insights on why this is challenging and how to reshape them. It all comes down to incentives and consequences. A famous example from their bestseller Freakonomics illustrates this concept. After Cedars Sinai Hospital implemented incentives like increased hand sanitizer dispensers, rewards for frequent hand washers, and displaying bacteria culture posters, healthcare workers drastically changed their hand washing habits. The administration leveraged incentives rather than punishments, leading to successful behavioral changes. This principle can apply to other habits like mindfulness. To improve mindfulness, start with reachable goals, like dedicating just 5 minutes a day. It's easier to achieve a small goal initially and gradually increase duration. Next, create a supportive environment conducive to meditation, such as a dedicated corner without electronic devices. An inviting space will nurture your new habit and make it more enjoyable. Finally, 
pay attention to your mind's feedback. Notice the difference in how you feel after practicing mindfulness versus skipping it. Registering both sensations helps create a feedback loop that encourages you to continue your practice. By implementing these strategies, setting manageable goals, fostering a conducive environment, and tuning into your mind's feedback, you can successfully cultivate new habits that eventually become second nature. Breaking free from negative behaviors and replacing them with positive habits is possible when we effectively leverage the power of incentives and consequences. Mastering Mindful Breathing When stress begins to overwhelm you, try focusing on your breathing as a calming strategy. Close your eyes and concentrate on how each breath feels as it affects different parts of your body. Start with your stomach and work your way up to your nostrils, remaining present in the moment. If distractions arise, gently redirect your attention back to your breath. Consistent practice of mindful breathing can not only create a sense of calm during stressful situations, but also improve your ability to concentrate. Ever found yourself caught in a frustrating situation and felt your stress levels rising rapidly? Regaining control can be as simple as focusing on your breathing. Many meditation practices actually start with this technique, and it's quite effective. The moment you feel stress taking over, close your eyes and get comfortable. Direct your attention to your breath, feeling its effects on your body without getting into minute details. Your objective is to anchor your mind on the sensations of each breath. Pay attention to how breathing affects different body parts, starting with your stomach's rise and fall, followed by your chest and ribcage, and finally, the air flowing through your nostrils. Maintaining mindfulness is crucial, stay present and if your mind wanders, gently steer it back to your body and breath without annoyance. With consistent practice, mindful breathing can transform stressful moments into serene ones and even enhance your concentration skills. Give it a try and witness the magic it brings. Transforming mundane into memorable. Mindfulness can turn even the simplest tasks into deeply satisfying and pleasurable experiences by offering a new perspective on everyday actions. Walking meditation is a powerful way to practice mindfulness by focusing on bodily sensations during movement, such as the shifting weight of your feet on the ground. Changing speeds and bringing wandering thoughts back to the present further enhances this practice. Another way to practice mindfulness is the body scan meditation, which requires you to observe the sensations in each part of your body without judgment or analysis. Such mindfulness exercises can help you become more in tune with the present moment, ultimately transforming the mundane into something memorable and enriching. Separating pain from suffering Pain and suffering are often seen as a single entity, but the truth lies in our ability to control our reactions to pain, ultimately reducing the suffering we experience. Mindfulness meditation offers a way to separate pain from suffering, providing the tools to observe pain objectively instead of obsessing over it. Through practices like mindful breathing meditation, we can significantly enhance our ability to manage pain without adding unnecessary emotional stress. Pain is inevitably a part of life, yet suffering is the outcome of our own emotional responses to that pain. For instance, childbirth is unquestionably painful, but women perceive and remember the experience differently, with some viewing it as transformative rather than traumatic. Pain is an objective sensation, unlike suffering, which is rooted in our subjective reactions. Using mindfulness as a tool, we can limit the emotional turmoil associated with pain. A client named Rachel, suffering from chronic fatigue syndrome, initially approached her painful symptoms with anger and discouragement, amplifying her suffering. By using mindfulness meditation to process pain, focusing on practices such as mindful breathing, she was able to detach her emotional reactions from her physical discomfort. When we regularly engage in mindfulness exercises, we can make pain more manageable by curbing the self-inflicted suffering that often accompanies it. Harnessing Mindfulness Meditation Negative emotions are a natural part of being human, but our upbringing may not have taught us healthy ways to handle them. Unhealthy emotional responses can persist if we aren't taught to manage our feelings properly as children. 
Mindfulness meditation helps us process emotions positively by acknowledging them, investigating other associated emotions, examining our body's reactions, and observing changes in our relationship with those emotions. Practicing mindfulness meditation can lead to more balanced emotional responses over time. Being human means experiencing a range of emotions, both positive and negative. While feelings like anger, sadness, and jealousy are normal, many of us struggle to deal with these emotions healthily. The root of this issue can often be traced back to our childhood, where our emotional foundations are laid. With no standard emotional intelligence lessons in schools, it's common for us to adopt our parents' coping mechanisms for dealing with difficult emotions, whether that means expressing them loudly or repressing them entirely. Both extremes of emotional expression can be unhealthy. Mindfulness meditation offers a more constructive approach to handling negative emotions. To put mindfulness meditation into practice, start by noticing and naming the emotion that arises in a moment of strong emotional reaction. Breathe deeply, considering whether you can accept that emotion. If not, explore any underlying emotions that may be attached to it, like shame associated with anger. Try to accept those additional emotions. Next, shift your focus from the mind to the body. Identify the physical sensations connected to your emotional state, such as tension or pain. Consider ways to alleviate those symptoms. Afterward, reflect on whether your relationship with the emotion has shifted through this process of contemplation. Patience is key when practicing mindfulness meditation, transformation won't happen overnight. As you dedicate time and effort to exploring and understanding your emotions, you'll gradually develop the ability to face and process them more dispassionately. Ultimately, you'll cultivate healthier, more balanced emotional responses, enabling you to better navigate life's ups and downs. Embrace loving-kindness. The prevalent self-hatred and self-doubt in American society can be combated with the power of loving-kindness, a meditation practice rooted in Buddhist traditions. By focusing on loved ones, directing compassionate thoughts toward ourselves and others, and expanding this love even toward strangers or unlikable individuals, we can rediscover our self-worth and foster positivity within ourselves and our surroundings. Self-hatred and self-doubt plague the minds of many, regardless of their success or accomplishments. The key to overcoming this persistent negativity lies in embracing loving-kindness, a meditation technique derived from Buddhist teachings. To begin, focus on connecting with your own feelings of love. Visualize someone you hold dear and let their image enkindle the warmth of love and affection within you. Then, redirect this energy toward yourself, soaking in the same loving-kindness you reserve for those you cherish the most. If necessary, envision your younger self so that you can access the empathy and gentleness we naturally extend to children. The transformative power of loving-kindness goes beyond fostering self-worth. It also rekindles our positive views of the world. Refocus on the image of your loved one and gradually transfer your loving energy to other people you care for, such as friends and family. As your practice deepens, expand your sphere of compassion to include strangers, acquaintances, and even those with whom you share no affinity. In time, you'll amass the ability to channel this positive energy into all aspects of your life, illuminating yourself and the world around you with the warm glow of loving-kindness. Embracing this practice promises not only a burgeoning sense of self-worth but also the gift of unconditional love and compassion for all those we encounter on life's journey. Mindfulness Modes, Focused versus Open Mindfulness can be practiced in various environments and situations by understanding the two types, focused and open mindfulness. Focused mindfulness hones in on a specific point, like your breathing, making it suitable for task-oriented activities such as studying or working. Open mindfulness, on the other hand, cultivates an awareness of the world around you, perfect for creative activities and inspiration. Both require different methods of practice, but can be seamlessly incorporated into day-to-day -day activities to ultimately create a more mindful life. Imagine sitting on a park bench next to a lively playground. Children's laughter and shouts fill the air, seemingly an impossible place to meditate, right? Surprisingly, it's not. 
This is where distinguishing between focused and open mindfulness comes into play. Focused mindfulness revolves around directing your attention to a singular aspect, such as your breath, whereas open mindfulness involves being aware of the diverse sights, sounds, and smells that surround you. In an environment like the park bench scenario, applying open mindfulness allows you to absorb the sensory input, while focused mindfulness would be challenging amidst the chaos. Understanding when to employ each type of meditation is crucial. If you're aiming for a specific goal like preparing for an exam or meeting, focused mindfulness is your best bet. However, if a creative project requires inspiration, open mindfulness will suit you better. Practicing these distinct techniques demands varying approaches. To develop focused mindfulness, try mindful breathing meditation, focusing on 10 complete breaths. Meanwhile, to sharpen open mindfulness, engage in mindful sound meditation, allowing your mind to wander from one sound to another without fixation. The key to incorporating mindfulness into your life is identifying opportunities to apply these methods regularly, be it in the shower, during meals, or commuting to work. By cultivating small moments of tranquility and focus, mindfulness will gradually become a natural part of your daily routine. In conclusion, Fully Present offers an insightful exploration into the realm of mindfulness, providing readers with techniques to wrestle with negative emotions, cultivate self-love, and foster a deeper connection with themselves and others. The book emphasizes the benefits of simple mindfulness exercises, from mindful breathing to walking meditation, that can detach us from our stress and emotional turmoil, increase awareness of our sensory experiences, and improve overall well-being. As you explore these various practices, you'll discover how mindfulness can transform your outlook, make positive changes to your daily habits, and lead to greater contentment in the present moment. With practice, you'll find that incorporating mindfulness into everyday activities will become second nature and unlock a world of greater appreciation and fulfillment.